are the Chinese doctors missing? This is our question as the federal government declare their whereabouts unknown. And despite the directive to grant essential workers free movement, NMA Abuja says its members are consistently harassed by security operatives. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. In a surprising turn of events, the federal government has said it does not know the whereabouts of the Chinese doctors and technicians who came into the country to assist Nigeria in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic on the invitation of the government. But their arrival, criticisms of invitation were expressed by several parties. However, the federal government has dispelled such fears of their presence in the country, stressing that they were in the country to help. The members of the House of Representatives had also resolved to investigate the legality of Chinese nationals living in Nigeria for possible repatriation back to their country after reports had made rounds that Nigerians and other African nationals were experiencing racist attacks. Joining us to discuss this is Dr. Abraham Harrison, the Secretary General of International Human Rights Commission, West African Region, via phone, and Dr. Williams Wallace, President of African Development Goals Initiative, also via phone. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight on the show. Okay. Good evening, Dr. Abraham. How are you doing this evening? I'm okay, Benny. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And Dr. Wallace, are you there? Thank you for joining us also. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Great. Let's, let's kick the show on this note. Now, the Minister of Health, Osage Haniwe, yesterday requested reporters not to bother his ministry over the whereabouts of Chinese medical experts who came into Nigeria to support the fight against COVID-19. I, I need your take on the minister's statement, gentlemen. Let me go with you and, and Dr. Wallace. I'll go with you first. Yeah, well, obviously, um, there is something very fishy there. And uh, it seems to me a bit, of, uh, a bit of docking the issue. And the reason why the issue is being docked is, could either be that uh, he has fear, he either is uh, a coward or there is something being hidden. Because you cannot say that at first these uh, Chinese are coming and they are doctors when obviously now they are not, um, and they are coming to help with coronavirus and to exchange uh, what they know. And then uh, they must come when the Nigerian Medical Association said, no, they must not come. We have enough experts here. Uh, they said they are coming and we insist that they are coming. When they arrived, and then they were questioned as to whether their validity um, in terms of their speciality and uh, the fact that the NMA, uh, uh, we suggested that they look at uh, whether they are virologists, whether they have uh, peer review, whether they know what they're talking about, suddenly they disappeared and it was no longer a question of the government, but it was the Chinese company that invited them. Yet Nigeria hired an aircraft, <laughs> and that is uh, uh, the peace airlines to bring them and they were all smiling and waving these very young people who do not look like doctors more like technicians or the people the liberation army spies as far as i'm concerned and then they've suddenly disappeared so where are they the security services need to flush them out and expose them oh, wow. find out who they are what are they here for and where are they hiding well, if we, the we do, we, well, the, yeah, Dr. Dr. No Williams, the, the, the federal government did say through the Ministry of Health why they came into the country to help in the fight against COVID-19 and to offer their expertise. Now, Dr. Abraham, you want to react to this. How, how do you feel? How do you react to the statement credited to the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe, about the whereabouts of these uh, medical, this Chinese medical um, experts who came into the country? Oh, okay, experts. Benny. Uh, my first take is that uh, for every foreigner that enters uh, any land, it is the responsibility of the government to have their whereabouts. So uh, I want to disagree with what the Minister of Health said, that uh, uh, we don't know the whereabouts of the Chinese uh, health doctors. No, that is uh, uh, not obtainable in this uh, current scenario as far as the pandemic is concerned. Uh, if, if you ask me, if, if you ask me, we should have an idea, we should know precise location, where they are, what they are doing, at what point and how. The reason being that we need to secure our persons, we need to secure our citizens. 
these are foreigners. Remember that we have been quarantining every, even Nigerian who has come from abroad within this pandemic period. So we do not have any excuse. We owe our nation uh, the truth about the whereabouts of any foreigner within our land, whether he is Chinese or not. You know, so I, I, I would expect the Minister for Health to come back to us on a more positive note to really tell Nigerians exactly where these Chinese personnel are, especially with the fact that the pandemic started in Wuhan, which is a Chinese territory. You know, so and we're talking about uh, human rights. We're talking about uh, the safety of our citizens. We're isolating, we're quarantining, we're social distancing, and then we have foreigners in our midst, and then we want to say uh, we don't know where they are, but we knew when they came in. No, I, I think it's wrong, if you ask me. I think it's wrong. All right. You know, so. Dr. Williams, now, Mr. Han Ayre, the uh, Minister of Health, did say the medical personnel are not guests of the federal government, but the CC, ECC um, Chinese firm, a construction company. But this wasn't the first impression the federal government gave upon their arrival into the country and why they were coming in the first instance. Now, what do we make of this? Uh, absolutely. So now you see that there is some kind of sinister move uh, between uh, probably uh, the government, CCEC, and these Chinese. What are they doing here? And this is where the uh, security services have got to brace up. Go and find them where they are and what are they about? Where are they in the country? No foreigner should be able to come in during this type of time, and we don't know where they are and what they're up to. Uh, are they inside CCC headquarters? Then invite them. Invite them out. Let's see who they are, and let's vet every single individual one of them, because I can bet that they are not medical doctors, because they will not uh, submit themselves to be screened by our medical association here. Dr. Abraham, if you can recall, the 15-member team of Chinese medical personnel arrived in the country on exactly April 8, and the federal government, through the Minister of Health, did say they were here to share their experiences in fighting the COVID-19. What could have informed the change of this affirmation by the same uh, Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe, in asking reporters and journalists not to ask them, ask him about the whereabouts of this Chinese, of this Chinese team, this medical Chinese team? Well, I, I would start by saying that uh, for every position of leadership we attain anywhere, we are responsible to the citizens of uh, that country. Uh, whether you are an executive or you belong to the uh, representative, House of Representatives, National Assembly, or the Senate, I think that's the first thing that we need to know. There's a lot of difference between two words that we use together called political leadership. You can be a politician and not be a leader. And you can be a leader and not uh, be in the terrain of politics. But for you to be a political leader, you need a lot of experience. You need a lot of education. You need to understand what the deliverables are. And now, if you ask me, there's a lot of crimes across the world against the Chinese. It does not mean that the Chinese do not have their good path. But it means that for us as a country, we need to look at whatever it is we're gaining from the, from the Chinese, vis-a-vis -vis the goodness, the health implications, the, the goodness of, of our citizens. And that is where we need to be able to draw a mark and to say that whatever is coming from the Chinese is not going to be healthy for our citizens. Uh, if we want to look at it from the good side, this is what the world is saying. There must be a template. There must be a mark. The basic thing is that we need our country to advance technologically, advance economically, advance even in human rights issues. So we should be able to keep diplomacy in one side and tell ourselves the truth. Every step we take, is it going to move us as a nation forward? Is it going to give us the advancement we need? Is it going to make our people healthy? And vis a vis the fact that we are being killed out on one economic issue, or we are being conscribed as negative because of uh, a particular uh, group of persons across the world, the Chinese, right now. No, I, I believe that right now, this shutdown period across the world is, is, is a global thing, and every nation this time is really looking inward 
to see how they can provide for themselves, health-wise, economic-wise, agri-wise, health, name it. You know, so I think we have come to that point where we should start having a lot of face-to-face -face discussions with our leaders in government, with uh, the civil societies, with the National Assembly, whoever. It is time. The time now is particular for us to start discussing these same features. Uh, our leaders have also been affected by this thing. We used to have issues where uh, you have one small pain, you have a doctor in London, you're going to London, or you're going to America, you're going to Egypt, or you're going to India for one checkup or the other. Now, because of the global pandemic, nobody is traveling anywhere. You know, So it is time for us to improve on our health system. It is time for us to improve on our grid. It is time for us to improve on a lot of educational sectors. You know, so that we can now move forward in the template of the world, you know. Dr. Williams, now still recall that the Nigerian Medical Association, the NMA, also described the move when it was first reported as a thing of embarrassment to the membership of the association and other health workers who were giving their best in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic under deplorable working conditions. Now, Ms. Haniwe, however, insisted then that the experts were sharing their experience after making progress in the fight against the virus in their country, in China. He said, and I quote, the Chinese medics will be providing technical support to Nigeria in its fight against COVID-19 and also sharing experiential strategies of how their country curtailed the spread of the virus, end of quote. How can he then say he doesn't know where they are? When he was one of those who insisted and said they were going to come whether Nigerians liked it or not. Okay. Well, well, that is yes, Dr. Wa Dr. Wallace, let me, let me go with Dr. Williams. Abraham, I'll come back okay. to you in a bit. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I find that ridiculous, insulting, and obviously that minister, I have to say he is a coward, you know, because after you were so brave and bravado that uh, they will come here, they will exchange, they will do this, they will do that. And up to now, we have not seen any example of what they have come to do, and they have not been subjected to any exchange of uh, ideas and experimental and uh, experiential uh, individual abilities and capabilities, which means they're frauds. They're fraudulent. You know, let's call a spade a spade. Uh, what did they do? They could have done that by Zoom. They could have done that by Skype. There was no need to come here to uh, uh, raise... Uh, a dust among our Nigerian Medical Association who have over 6,000 members and who can do the job. We have virologists. That's the point we made uh, weeks ago. And I dare say that is perhaps this program and what we uh, challenged, that these people were not here for what they said they came for. And I think really and truly we've got to continue to investigate this matter. It is too dangerous for a country and for protecting the lives of Nigerians and Africans in general from these Chinese. Dr. Abraham, you want to react to this quickly? Yes, I agree with, uh, completely with Dr. Wallace. Yeah, it's uncalled for. Um, with the pandemic that started in the Chinese territory, we didn't have any reason bringing in Chinese personnel here to help us with what? Uh, I mean, I agree with him that we could have had a an online activity where they could tell us, okay, you go left, you go right, you mix this, you mix that. We have expert personnel. We have Nigerians who are so experienced in the medical field. You know, that's the reason why the enemy started uh, by reacting negatively to the fact that the Chinese people are coming in here. Well, we have adequate personnel. We have experienced personnel. We have professionals. Whatever the, whatever the uh, indices are, I think it's something we could contain. You, you can see from what's happening, what, what happened in Madagascar. You can see also what happened in Senegal. You know, we, we can emulate a lot of these things. We, we, we actually are more experienced. Technically, we have more financial progress than Madagascar and Senegal to be able to sit across the table and, and discuss uh, a little bit of what it entails and do small research on these things and come up with our own cure. You know, we didn't need bringing in Chinese into this, uh, into this place. Uh, I'm going by their antecedents also. I think right now we should be walking away from them. Uh, Dr. We don't Dr. speak Abraham. the same language. Dr. Uh, Abraham. Uh, 
Yes, please. please. Help me. I believe when I say what I'm about to say, I, I also represent the minds of millions of Nigeria who are wondering because what they came for was pretty much known and stated clearly, unequivocally clear. Now, going by what the Minister of Health recently said yesterday, does this now mean that the federal government does not know what they are really doing here and what is their true mission? Because many Nigerians really want to know about the whereabouts of the Chinese, what they came for as stated initially, and their whereabouts right now. Well, if you ask me, I would say three things. One, there's something called personal opinion. There's something called public opinion. And there's also another one called generally accepted opinion. Personally, I think that was the minister's uh, personal opinion. Because if he's representing this nation in the executive arm of the government, representing the government, then he cannot come on air and tell us that we don't know the whereabouts of uh, Chinese that we knew when they came in. We, were, we, we said we we're going to quarantine them for 14 days. So did they just escape the thin air? No, it's not possible. It's not acceptable. Dr. Wallace, now the question now comes, were they, not, were they not vetted by both our security agencies and Nigeria Medical Association? Given the uproar, the, the Nigeria Medical Association were very, were very spotlight with their, their views about the Chinese coming. So, I mean, they were meant to have been vetted by both our security agencies and the NMA Association. Was this not done from the, from the onset? Oh, it was not, because if it was, the NMA would be able to say, uh, these are the 15 uh, uh, experts. This is their areas of specialization. We know about them because we have checked their peer reviews, whether they have done uh, similar work with uh, British, American, and other uh, specialists, even Nigerians, because Nigerians uh, can uh, uh, run rings around some of these uh, uh, so-called Chinese experts because we deal with viruses all the time. Did we not push back Ebola in, uh, to the sacrifice of one or two doctors in this country, we have the expertise. So therefore, what they have come for, and the 15 of them, they have not been vetted by the NMA, so we can't tell who they are, what is their areas of specialization, and the security services should be able to find out what are they absolutely doing here. Flush them out, expose them. My suspicion, it could be the People's Liberation Army have them here on an agenda, and insisted that they were coming for something else. They may have duped the government, for all you know. They may have duped the government and they're saying, we are coming here to assist on COVID, and then they have come here for another reason. And it's all been hatched inside the CCEEC or whatever they call that company. Could it be 5G? Could it be uh, a, another type of virus that they're going to let loose on the population? Are they gone and have they been mingling among our population in Abuja and elsewhere, because wherever they have a project, they could have gone to in any village. I am very fearful of what these people are up to. And so should every Nigerian, and so should every African. These people are duplicitous, and they are very dangerous. They are here in Africa with big debts for our resources. And, you know, their Marshall Plan is being carried out. And we are just, you know, uh, very stupid and willing uh, 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 buyers of their uh, of their nonsense. It's time we stand up and tell these people where to get lost. Get rid of them. All they right. have no right to be here. Okay. Get rid of them. All right, Do Dr. Abraham Arison. Now you are the um, Secretary General of the International Human Rights Commission, West African Region, and so so much about yeah. human rights violation is is on your desk. Now recall also that members of the House of Representatives at resumption of plenary on the 28th of March, April, to be precise had resolved to investigate the legality of Chinese nationals living in Nigeria for possible repatriation back to their country. Now, this was followed due to the poor treatment of Nigerians in China, especially those who were living in Guangzhou City in Asian country. Investigations are currently ongoing, but what's your recommendation as one who is in charge of the International Human Rights Commission right here in West Africa and your findings, your discoveries so far? Uh, well, okay, if, if you ask me, let me start from the, from this point, that I give kudos to the National Assembly who have uh, asked the executive arm of government to look into the background of uh, Chinese personnel in the country to ascertain uh, the authenticity of the documentation in the file, uh, locate them back to the people and all of that. It means that they're actually thinking the minds of Nigerians. You know, but, but findings show that 
the Chinese did not just come in here today, like a couple of days before the pandemic. They've been here for a while. The Chinese government has assisted the Nigerian government and all of other governments across West Africa and Africa in a lot of areas, giving us one aid or the other. Uh, but you see, the truth is, the way the world is going now, the, the, the global pandemic is making a lot of governments to have a rethink on the association they have with uh, the Chinese government, China as a whole, and all the other associated Chinese uh, uh, countries, uh, countries and all of them around. The, the, the truth is, the Chinese have done well for themselves over a while. Uh, and I see it as a challenge to Africa as a whole to also challenge ourselves in a lot of areas that the Chinese have been able to do well for themselves. There are very few items in the market, technologically-wise, that is not manufactured in China, including vehicles. Now, what are we still doing? Not being, like uh, in Nigeria, not being able to produce toothpick pencils, chocolates of irons and computers and air conditions and stuff like that. So I have some concern. I believe that we should touch ourselves. We have opened our borders for a long while, and that's why we have a high rate of uh, human rights violation uh, by a lot of these uh, West nation, especially the Chinese. You know, the, the, somebody should not come in here and uh, dangle a carrot to us and then take over our, our society, take over our village, take over our communities, become crowned as a king. As a... No, it doesn't happen. All right. All right, Dr. Dr. Abraham, Dr. Abraham. Just, just hold, hold your thoughts there. You're still with us on the next segment. I, I need to wrap up with Dr. Williams Wallace. Dr. Williams, now investigations are still ongoing. I'm going by what the House of Rep intends to do, possible repatriation of um, Chinese who, who, who reside here in Nigeria. Now, by way of recommendation, what, what are your thoughts, Dr. Dr. Williams? Yeah, okay. Um, the recommendation is um, flush them out, get rid of them, and um, those who have any legal rights here, monitor the uh, the absolute work that they have to do and the time period for going back. Use the Ghana model and get uh, Chinese who are here to partner with Nigerians, transfer their technology and ship them back out. Now, I, I think what is also more important is uh, the vaccination issue um, with regards to um, our, uh, our Nigerians and Africans. And that is an issue that I think should be brought up. I don't know if they are also working with uh, the Bill Gates of this world. But uh, I think one of the key things that uh, we need to be very careful about on the vaccination, I'm happy that Dr. Abram talked about Madagascar and looking inwards and getting the COVID organics and what Senegal is doing. We now need to look very carefully at uh, GMO. And this one is a genetically modified organism of uh, the vaccines that they want to try in Nigeria and Africa. And that is going to interfere with our DNA and our genome, which means that we can be controlled uh, internally from outside. They're doing the same with malaria, Dr. Williams, the same with crops. Dr. Williams, this, so would be, this, would be, this would be another kettle of fish for a different discussion another day, and I'll definitely get to you on that. Uh, Dr. I, Williams Wallace, it's I been a pleasure having you join us on the show, and thank you for your insightful contribution, as always. Thank you very much. Look and also, Dr. Abraham Harrison, thank you for your contribution on this segment. You'll stay with us for the next, and we'll be right back with you. Thank you for staying with us. In our next discussion, the House of Representatives once again condemned extrajudicial killings and human rights abuse by security operatives in the country. We'll be right back. <laughs>